Dear brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. There are investment opportunities in this world, as well as there are times of mercy and blessings and giving from Allah Almighty for the hereafter. Anyone who is serious about his relationship with Allah Almighty and about the hereafter has to pay special attention to these times. And among them, one hadith from the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says, do goodness throughout your lives and expose yourselves to the times of mercy from Allah Almighty. Because verily, there are times of special mercy and giving from Allah Almighty that touches some of his servant, whom he, whoever he likes. So if you are serious about it, you have to pay special attention to them. And among them, there are 20 special days every year. The last 10 days of Ramadan and the first 10 days of the Hijjah. If we'll take a very quick glimpse or comparison between them, the first one is linked with Ramadan, a blessed month. This one is linked with the Hijjah, which is a sacred month. The first one in it was the beginning of Islam. In the second one, it was the completion of the religion. In the first one, the beginning of the revelation of the Holy Quran. In the second one, the completion of the revelation of the Holy Quran. The first one is linked with Psalm, which is a pillar in Islam. Second, linked with another pillar in Islam, which is Hajj. The first one, the ibadah in it is one month. Psalm is for one month, while Hajj, as Allah Almighty mentioned in the Holy Quran, for a specific months, multiple months. Sarf, Shawwal, Dhul Qa'dah, and Dhul Hijjah. In the first one, there are 10 blessed night. In this one, 10 blessed days. In that one, there is Laylat al-Qadr, better than 1,000 month. In these, there are two special nights, Yawm Arafah and Yawm Nahr, the best day in the sight of Allah Almighty ever. In the first one, takbir starts after the end of them. In this one, the takbir, the specific takbir after every salah, starts actually within them. After the salah of Fajr of the day of Arafah, and continues on the second day, the tenth day, and continues afterward as well. Takbir there is for less than a day, from Maghrib till the prayer of Eid. On this one, it is for five continuous days. That one is followed by Eid al-Fitr, which is officially in Islam only one day. This one is followed by Eid al-Abha, which is four or five days in Islam. That one, after it, there is Zakat al-Fitr. This one, within it, in the tenth day, there is al-Udhiya. So the, the competition between them is quite strong. Now, which one is better in the sight of Allah Almighty? And surprisingly, these days are better in the sight of Allah Almighty and more important. However, most Muslims pay attention to which? Ramadan. And they forget about this. Now, why these days are better in the sight of Allah Almighty? The scholar mentioned is because all the principles of ibadah in Islam are found in these days. You will find in it Salah, and Sawm, and Zakah, and Dhikr of Allah Almighty, and Takbir, recitation of the Holy Quran, Sadaqah, Udhiya, Hajj, and Umrah, of course. Now, most of these are already found in Ramadan as well. However, Udhiya is not there, and Hajj are, is not there. So, which days are better? Back these days. Another reason is because in Ramadan, the evil is already enchained. It is easier to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now in these days, no, shaitan is at full swing. <laughs> Probably he will increase his effort in these days to misguide people, which is true. Most people, many of these days are days of holidays, and many people are way away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They are busy preparing for Eid or otherwise, or in their holidays. So already they are missing. Furthermore, in Ramadan, all the Muslims or most of them are doing the ibadah already. So being part of the group is much easier for you. While in these days, most of them are not paying attention to them at all. They might not know that they have already entered or they are over.
And furthermore, in Ramadan, most Muslims are already praying Qiyamul Layl and Tahajjud, and you are part of them, much easier for you. Now in these days, many people are missing that. So for these reasons and many others, you'll find that these days, of course, when it's more difficult to do ibadah, and when it's more exclusive, very few are doing it, the reward is going to be much more. And that is why the Messenger وسلم, said that these days are the best days in the sight of Allah Almighty out of the whole year. So what to do in them? Now, by the way, being best in the sight of Allah Almighty, they are more beloved by Allah Almighty, and the reward in them are greater. This is how they are better than the rest of them. What to do in them? The Messenger وسلم, mentioned simply good deeds. And he did not specify a specific good deed. So if you are going to do any kind of goodness in your life, pay attention to pay them and do them. In these days, there will be more rewarding. We find some of the Salaf used to delay or act actually to forward some of their charities throughout the year in these days because they are more rewarding. Some of them dislike to fast any non-obligatory fast if they still have obligatory fast in Ramadan until they complete the month of Ramadan except for these days they will fast them this, this is an opportunity you cannot afford to waste now what to do in them among them we will highlight few that are very important and very easy inshallah very few people are able to go to Hajj and get the rewards of Hajj however that does not mean you are going to miss on the rewards of Hajj if you'll pay attention to pray Fajr in Jama'ah and then remain in the Masjid remembering Allah Almighty making Dhikr and Dua, recitation of the Holy Quran and so on until after sunrise after sunrise by about 15 or 20 minutes then pray to Raka'a of Ishraq or to Raka'a of Duha what do you get? The Messenger وسلم, said the reward will be the reward of Hajj and Umrah. Complete, complete, complete. The reward of a complete Hajj and Umrah. So this is much easier. So you could do it in every day. You could do it throughout the year. But at least these days, because they, these are the days of Hajj, if you are missing on that, you will inshallah get the reward of the Hajj as well. Another thing to do is to fast. And it is narrated that the Messenger وسلم, never left the fasting of Ashura and the 10 days of the first of the Hijjah and three days of every month. So this is a great opportunity to do the fasting as well. In fact, Al Hassan al Basri says that the fasting of one day in these 10 days equals the reward of, 20, of two months. The rewards of two months, 60 days. I'm not aware of the basis for his saying, but most likely he has heard something. This is not something that you say after your own mind. But this is related to from Al-Hasan Al-Basri. May Allah Almighty be pleased with him. Uh, now, out of them, if you are very lazy, at least pay attention. Of course, when we say fasting of the din, there is no such thing of fasting 10 days. Rather, fasting 9 days. The 10 days is the day of Eid, which is forbidden to fast for everyone. So it's not allowed to fast that day. This is similar to when we say the last 10 days in Ramadan, they could be nine nights only, not necessarily 10. But the idea is as a number, usually they say this. Now the Messenger وسلم, made a special mention of one single day, which is the day of Arafah. So if you are very lazy, you don't want to fast, at least do not miss the fasting of the day of Arafah because the reward of the fasting of the day, ten, uh, the day of Arafah, Allah Almighty will forgive the sins of two years. The previous year and in advance for the coming year, subhanAllah. So this is a great opportunity that nobody should miss, if you are serious, so that you will end this year, inshallah, sin free. And you are already automatically starting the next year as well, sin free is a great opportunity that we should pay attention to. Also, we need to increase takbir and remembrance of Allah Almighty in general. When the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned these days, he said, so increase in them saying takbir and tasbih and tahmeed and tahleel. He's saying Allahu Akbar, SubhanAllah, Alhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah. He said increase. What does it mean? More than the norm. How? As much as you can, 
where anywhere in public or in secret in home outside the home in the markets everywhere increase the takbir everywhere that is why the early generation they used to realize that they have already started when they are hearing takbir in the markets and in the streets so they so it's already started one of the missing sunnahs nowadays very few people are doing that increase it and recite and even loudly not in your secret now among the dhikr of Allah Almighty there is a beautiful hadith from the Messenger وسلم, for very simple dhikr to do with great rewards the most important type of dhikr to say of course after the recitation of the Holy Quran no time to compare between the recitation of the Holy Quran and the general dhikr and there is a dispute among scholars which one is more important but we are talking after the Holy Quran so that is subhanallah walhamdulillah wa la ilaha illallah wa Allah akbar the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa mentioned this in many hadith however in one beautiful hadith the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa encouraged us to say them 100 times in the morning and in the evening now saying subhanallah 100 times how long would that take for you? nothing less than two minutes probably alhamdulillah same Allah akbar same then the fourth one, La ilaha illallah, but it's a longer one. La ilaha illallah, wahda wa la sharika lah, lahul mulku, lahul hamd, wa huwa ala kulli shayin qadir. This will probably take you, say, seven minutes or ten minutes, depends. And that's it. Now saying that in the morning and the evening, what is the reward? The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, anyone who says subhanallah 100 times before sunrise and before sunset, this is better for him in rewards than giving a charity of 100 camel. So the cheapest camel you could get nowadays, I'm not aware about the prices, but probably 10,000 or more, I don't know. So it's automatically, this is better than giving, better than giving as a charity of this huge amount. It's close to a million if you're talking about 10,000. Every day for probably one or two minutes. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, and anyone who says Alhamdulillah 100 times before sunrise and before sunset, there is better than 100 horse loaded for the sake of Allah Almighty. And anyone who says Allahu Akbar 100 times before sunrise and before sunset, there is better for him than sitting free 100 persons. 100 slaves. Sitting free, just to give you a glimpse of the, the increase in the reward, the Messenger وسلم, said, anyone who sits a slave free, because Islam came to free slavery. Anyone who sits a slave free, Allah Almighty will set him free from hellfire. A limb for a limb. Complete slave, completely been. So one single. So here this is better than sin free 100 slave and anyone who says la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lah lahul mulku wa lahul hamd wa huwa ala kulli shay'in qadir 100 time before sunrise and before sunset none will come with a better deed in the hereafter except someone who did similar to him or more so at least in these days Pay attention to these two special times before sunrise and before sunset. It means after the Salah of Fajr and before sunrise, after the Salah of Asr and before Maghrib. Dedicate 10 15 minutes of your time to get this great reward from Allah Almighty. Among the good deeds of these days is to offer the Udhiyah if you are able to. Now, why do we offer the Udhiyah? What is the sacrifice? Strange thing to do. It's obligated by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in some instances and it is recommended by the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa in these days for Muslims in general. Now this highly recommended sunnah was asked about by the Sahaba radiallahu anh. They said to the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa O Messenger of Allah, what is this sacrifice that we are offering? The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa said, this is the sunnah of your father Ibrahim alayhi salam. Of course, and it is the sunnah of our Messenger, the Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa after that. So they say, and what is in it for us from Allah Almighty? What do you get if you offer it? The Messenger وسلم, said, for every single hair, you will get a reward from Allah Almighty. How many hairs in such an animal? I am not aware. I don't know. 
But this is a huge reward for sure. And that is why if you can afford it, you should try your best to do it. You are dealing with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this is your actual money. Any money that you spend for the sake of Allah Almighty, this is kept for you in your bank account with Allah Almighty in the year after. Your account with Allah Almighty. This remains for you forever. Nobody can take it away. Any money that remains with you in this world, most likely that is not your money. This is the money of people who will inherit it after your death. You are collecting it and protecting it for them, not for yourself. You'll get nothing from it. Nothing. The only thing you will get is you will be questioned about it. Where did you get it? How did you get it? Why did you keep it? Why didn't you spend it? How did you spend whatever you have spent from it? So that the thing that remains for you is the things that you will benefit from in the hereafter. Now, final thing is, of course, Hajj and Umrah. If you could afford to go to Hajj and Umrah in these days, this is the best thing to do in these days. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in the beautiful hadith, anyone who made the talbiya loud or made takbir loud, means the people of Hajj. They will be given the glad tiding. They asked the Messenger وسلم, what glad tiding, O Messenger of Allah, of paradise? The Messenger وسلم, said yes. They will be given the glad tiding of paradise. Every time, every time he says it, the angels will tell him, I'll give you the glad tiding, inshallah, you'll be among the people of paradise. So this is the reward of someone who just simply says it every time. Imagine about the one who is performing the Hajj entirely and completely. May Allah Almighty facilitate for us, inshallah, performing the Hajj. Taking seize of these opportunities, this is something very important. In fact, Allah Almighty made a vow in the Holy Quran with the time and the time passing. And he says, verily, by the time and the passing of time or the passage of time, Every single human being is at loss. Except those who believe and do good deed and advise one another of truth and advise one another to be patient. Means the good deeds after belief. Anything else in the hereafter is going to be a time of regret. Every person will regret. Even the righteous one, they will regret. It's a time of regret. But they will regret that they did not increase more goodness. They did not do more. Imagine a student at the end receiving the certificate and it is missing one or two points. And he could have done better to get them. So this is the concept. No matter where you will be in the hereafter, you will still regret not doing more. So this is an opportunity as long as we are alive, alhamdulillah. That is why some people, when they used to come for advice, to the righteous people, they tell them, those people who are already dead, what do they hope for? What do they wish for? So they wish to be alive, to be able to do what? To do more good deeds. Say, okay, fine, you are still alive. Why don't you do it? This is the best advice for you. One day you will be among them. And Allah Almighty told us in the Holy Quran to seize these opportunities and not be distracted by the worldly matters or our own families and money. Family is very important in Islam. Protecting money is very important in Islam. It's one of the vital five necessities in Islam, both of them. So you're talking about two of them. <coughs> says, do not be distracted from the hereafter. From remembering Allah Almighty. From saying takbir and tasbih and tahleel nowadays. Sadly, nowadays we are not even distracted by that. We are distracted by just play. Waste of time. So this is a good reminder. Even if you have missed the days of Ramadan, you didn't do that much in Ramadan, alhamdulillah, the opportunity has already started from yesterday sunset and onwards for the end of these days, the beautiful days, and then continues afterwards, inshallah. May Allah Almighty guide us to seize the opportunities of these good days and to benefit from them. May Allah Almighty write over us the best reward that He has written for any of His servants and righteous people in these days. May Allah Almighty guide us to follow the path of the Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa His sunnah and the path of His followers آمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين